Hi, this is Chris Croft with the Ashtanga Workshop Podcast. Today we're going to be looking at three of the most challenging poses in the primary series, beginning with Bhuja Padasana. So from downward facing dog, we're going to try to jump the feet around the hands, bring the feet wide, walk the hands back behind the feet, bending the knees, and bring the back of the legs onto the back of the arms. Straightening the arms, you can work to straighten the legs up to balance on the arms, and then bend the knees to cross the feet around the front, right foot over left foot. And then as you exhale, lead with the chin and fold forwards, take the feet back through the hands, and either bring the forehead to the floor, or you can extend forward with the chin. So the higher that you can get the legs up onto the back of the arms, and the more that you can work on the abdominals and the hip flexors to keep you up, the more that you can keep the feet off the floor. This is a challenging pose, and not to be attempted by beginners. To exit the pose, try to bring the feet back through the hands without touching the floor, straightening the legs, Take the feet back behind you, balancing on the back of the arms. Spring back to Chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. So, Kormasana, the turtle. Once again, spring the feet up and around the hands, wide with the feet. And then bend the knees, bring the back of the legs onto the back of the arms. Straightening the legs, and then we're going to lower down, bringing both the sit bones and the feet down. So, once you've done that, you can then work to bring the feet towards each other straightening the legs. Often it feels like there's a lot of pressure here on the back of the arms. The key here is to bring the back of the knees onto the back of the shoulders as much as possible and lengthen the front body. So most people are going to find that the knees are slightly bent here. Trying to bring the chin onto the floor and walking the hands backwards. So this is an intense pose and often we take more than five breaths here just to be able to get into the pose and take some time to open the body. To keep pushing the sit bones away, lengthening the front body, before we come into Supta Kormasana. So bend the knees slightly, bring the hands round the small of the back, take the bind if you can. You can use a towel there if you're not able to take the hands. And then walk the feet forwards behind the head. You'll have to use the heel and the toe here to ease the feet towards each other. And if you could, you would cross the ankles behind the back of the head. So. The more advanced version of this pose involves us coming all the way up and then we can work to try to bring the foot behind the head very slowly. The left foot comes first, try to bring the shin around the back of the shoulder rather than the back of the neck to avoid pressure on the back of the neck. The right foot comes up and crosses behind the left foot and then when we're ready we lower down onto the forehead. Now there tends to be a lot of pressure here on the forehead so you can begin to walk the sit bones back so that you don't feel as though you're grazing the top of the forehead. The hands have come behind me and you've interlaced the fingers to take the bind. And you're now in the full Supta Kormasana. So again, it's a very intense pose. Keep working with the breath, which is often restricted because the front of the body is curled in. So again, you're lengthening the front body. To exit, ground the hands. You're going to try to lift up, inhale, uncross the feet, straighten the legs, balance on the back of the arms, and exhale, float the feet back, Spring back into the Chaturanga. Inhale up, open the heart. Exhale back to downward facing dog, preparing for the next pose.